Good evening, friends. This is Laura with Papoya of Life. I hope that you had a fabulous Friday and have some fabulous plans for this upcoming Labor Day weekend. Excuse me. For some reason, I've got a scratchy throat tonight. So what I want to talk about, again, this is the next part of my series in Lyme disease. And I'm going to be doing this with a few other diseases that we get confused with. And I just want to make a point that part of the problems clinicians have when trying to help a patient find resolve to their situation is sometimes things can be confusing. And then again, you have the point where doctors are not allowed to admit that Lyme disease exists. They're not allowed to treat Lyme disease and they're only allowed one test, a clinical test that insurance companies cover. They don't cover the testing that actually does a series of tests. There's a couple of labs out there. I had mine done through Igenix and it came back that it was definitely CDC chronic Lyme disease. Now, my doctor ended up saying it was chronic persistent Lyme. Now, to stay on focus of comparing it with chronic fatigue and then Lyme, it doesn't matter if it's chronic persistent Lyme or Lyme, you just got, you just got bit, you didn't know that you got bit and like a few weeks later you're, you're sick. Well, one of the things that you could get misdiagnosed with is chronic fatigue. Now, there's not a lot of, there's a lot of, there's not a lot known about chronic fatigue. They speculate and think that it is caused by a virus or it's caused by a lot of stress. Both of those are true. If you've been a victim to this new virus that's been going around, you're exhausted. A virus can do that. An infection can do that too. And so there's, there's a virus I've seen bar virus and um, at there was a point in my treatment my Lyme treatment I asked my doctor could you test me for EBV he goes yeah that's a good test because many of you don't know me very well but I'm that type of patient that likes to understand what is going on when a doctor tells me something I will kind of further read up on it and try to figure out, is there anything else we could do? Is there something I can do naturally on my own? What can I do to feel better? So one of the things that I came across was Epstein-Barr virus, which is EBV. And a lot of us have it. And that was one thing that he did tell me because it came back positive. So that can contribute to the fatigue. But it also explained a lot of other things. And I can go into Epstein-Barr virus at another video because I'd like to keep this short. Plus, I have no idea why my throat is sore. David wasn't home today, so I didn't do a lot of chattering. So <laughs> I didn't even go out to the chickens and chat to them too much. So what I want to say is that they consider chronic fatigue a possible viral thing or excess stress and that makes sense because when we're stressed about stuff um, I know that when I was stressed over the last couple of years the first year and a half the first two years really because we're past two-year part part I was exhausted all the time and um, so stress can do that to you and when I'm stressed about other things, if that can happen. My stress level seems to be doing much better, but I do have a lot of fatigue lately. And I've been doing a, having a lot of flares, Lyme flares. So it's just kind of like, okay, what is this? But I'm gonna share the comparison between chronic um, fatigue and Lyme. Again, it's not, it doesn't matter when you get this Lyme or when you're finally diagnosed. They both are, they both have a lot of fatigue. They both have joint pain. They both 
have um, muscle pain. Lyme disease is more widespread joint pain, more widespread muscle pain. With Lyme disease, you have muscle weakness. And how that comes into play is um, muscle pain is like after you've worked out, you've done some weights and you're, you're sore, you know, or you, you've you gone to the gym for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Three days later, your muscles are sore. And that's a different type. That's a fatigue type of thing. But the pain, the, um, the pain and the muscle pain comes from the chronic fatigue. With Lyme disease, you also get muscle weakness. And how that plays out, at least in my experience, is that even though I have been working on strengthening my muscles, strengthening my upper body, strengthening my legs with various exercise, because I am determined I'm going to get my muscle strength back, I still don't have the muscle strength I once have had. And it has nothing to do with my age. It has to do with the fact that my body is not coming back to that stain. So you know what I do? I just do other stuff. I try to offset that by one of the things I did was I was able to acquire a battery operated lawnmower. For the first time in many years, I was out there mowing the lawn this spring and I felt, I felt empowered. I felt like I'm contributing. And actually in the springtime, we had a lot of beautiful weather, beautiful weather, plenty of sunshine helps my Lyme symptoms. Doesn't make me have a lot of strength, but on my husband's lawnmower, I can't pull the device to get it to start. I just, when I do, I just don't have that strength that I once had can't do the snowblower. So I depend on him. So there's a difference between muscle weakness and muscle pain. It's just physically you can't do something, but I'm working on it because I'm determined to get better. And even if I can't get better, at least I feel better emotionally trying. Now, both of them have headaches and migraines. Both of them have brain fog, memory concentration, memory issues, and stuff like that. Think about it. When you're exhausted, that happens. You know, it's like somebody waking you up after a good night's rest and you didn't get the rest that you need. You're kind of like foggy. You're not quite there. For many people, it's until they get that cup of coffee. Now, with Lyme disease... You get depression and ex and anxiety. And yes, anxiety is another symptom on my medical chart. Yay me. <laughs> and I've been working on that too. I think as we, or at least for me, I can't speak for everybody else. The more I learn about myself, the more I'm trying to work on things. Because quite honestly, people don't understand anxiety. People don't understand depression. And even though you can go into a medical facility, they know you might have it, but it doesn't register. And I don't care how much they advertise that we need more awareness on these, um, these disabilities. It doesn't come through all the time when you're being treated. They just kind of disregard you as you're a nutty lady. And yes, I've experienced that in a few cases. Most of my docs are, are fine. They know that what's going on. All right. Exhaustion after exercise. I get fatigued all the time. Now that is more on the chronic fatigue. But I get it also when my Lyme is bothering me. But still, I can go for a walk. And when I get back, I'm tired. Even when my Lyme symptoms are bothering me. So that is more... You know, that's more prominent in the chronic fatigue, but it can happen with chronic Lyme or Lyme itself. With chronic fatigue, they say there's no improvements after getting rest. I think it happens with Lyme disease because I was like that all the time. But another thing is one of the problems with, 
a doctor trying to figure out what's wrong. And we have to remember, there's no real, uh, what do they say? There's not a lot known about chronic fatigue, but it's an accepted diagnosis. And so it's just something that, okay, they're tired all the time. They have the muscle pain. They, so you get diagnosed with chronic pain or chronic fatigue. Sorry, it's late and I wanted to get, make sure I got this done. They also think, okay, the chronic fatigue is caused by a viral. And as I said, the Epstein-Barr virus can contribute to that. Now, Epstein-Barr can be contributed to Lyme disease as well, even though that's a virus. What causes Lyme disease is a bacterium. And there's various um, bacteriums for Lyme. And I'm not going into all of them today. I'm just, the general oversight is Lyme disease. Because depending on what you have, you'll get different symptoms. And yes, I will be incorporating that into this series. What part of Lyme disease is this? What part is this? And I had, we were looking at three of them. I had almost every symptom checked on every single one. So it was really hard. And, you know, chronic fatigue is really tough. You know, I think when we talk about depression and anxiety with those with Lyme disease, and again, I'm talking from experience and my own speculation and analysis of my experience. Depression, what is that? It's when we feel down, when we don't feel heard, when things just aren't going right. If you're a Lyme patient, or even if you don't know, or maybe if you're a patient of this most recent viral and you're not getting better and you're told they have nothing to help you, you're bound to get depressed. You're bound to have anxiety when you go in and you're told again it's all in your head. Now, I don't think those with this new virus will be told it's all in your head. They're going to, they're just, and I told my husband this at the very onset when I read and I heard that they didn't think they'd ever be able to help the people who were going to have long term um, the viral load. And I told him, my husband, I said, they're going to be in the same boat as those of us with Lyme disease. And that is really unfortunate. Because you see, when I went in and I was trying to find out what was wrong, we did all kinds of tests, head to toe. And, you know, it's, it's very exhausting because they come back and say, well, we think you have this, or we know you have this, but they never gave me an answer. And so when you had it, they would come back with an answer as, nope, you're all good. And so you were just kind of like hanging there. And so I'm that persistent patient that says, but this is still happening. Why? And you get to the point where they're not hearing you. How are we supposed to feel about that when a doctor stops hearing? Because their job is to help you find the root cause of why you don't feel better or why you're not feeling well and why it's taken so long. And eventually they think you're just making it up for attention. Trust me, anybody who has had Lyme or has Lyme, they are not making it up. They are seriously ill. Are there patients out there that make things up? Yeah, there's some people that they think they have everything in the world. We're not talking about that. We go in there and we complain, my body feels tired. I can't get enough sleep even though I slept all night. Um, what is, you know, and one of the things was like, the one that really stumped a lot of them is when I said, I just feel like there's bugs eating me from inside out. I didn't know anything about Lyme disease. Before I was diagnosed, I hadn't a clue that this disease even existed. So when I got, when I was told that he thought that's what it was and I needed to take this test, I, I dug, 
He gave me some literature. He gave me more when um, it came back confirmed that I had Lyme disease. And I just read and I read and I read. As tired as I was, I kept reading. And we talk about this exhaustion and the muscle fatigue and all that. While I was a seamstress, I noticed that I was my energy levels were deteriorating. My strength was deteriorating. It got to the point where all I did was either sit on the couch or sit on the recliner and fall asleep during the day. Which is why I had to, back then, kind of just not take customers anymore because I just wasn't feeling well. Now, that can be depressive. Now, they can diagnose diagnose it as depression when in fact your body is exhausted and I think that is why it is so hard for clinicians to decide is this depression because there the behavior is depression but I never had the depression of I mean I did some healing from my past life and stuff so at this time it was just like I'm tired. I couldn't explain it. Had nothing to do like similar to the past two years where I just, a lot of people got depressed. It wasn't that weakness and exhaustion. It was different. It was physical. So it comes across as depression, but the depression I feel, at least in my experience dealing with the Lyme on the onset, it's how it was treated when we're trying to find the answers. And it was really, really hard. And doctors would tell you they'd call you back, but then they wouldn't call you back. And then it's just like, you know, as patients, I would like to think that we will want to know our root cause. And as patients, we think our physicians want to help us, or our hope is that. And I honestly believe that they do. I honestly believe that. And as things change in the health um, circle, it's going to get worse because it has gotten worse. And so I think we need to be aware of when we're finally diagnosed with something, research, read, ask them, your physician, what can I read to make me better understand? Because I know with my specialist, the first appointment's about an hour, but your follow-ups are only 30 minutes. And so you're trying to get as much out of the, the appointment as possible. So you prepare your checklist, because they ask you to do that, and then you have your questions. Make sure your questions are written down. And try to keep within the appointment time. I'm not saying all doctors won't take the time. Um, but I think what happens when we have Lyme disease and we don't understand, most especially when it's a chronic persistent where you got it years ago and you don't know what's going on and you've had a lot of tests, they don't understand. They want to throw their arms up. And But honestly... I don't think they want to give up. They just don't know what to do. They don't know what other tests they can provide. I know that my first neurologist that my primary had sent me to, lovely lady, lovely doctor, and um, she did a lot of the tests, like fibromyalgia. She did the um, MRI. She did the balance. She did all those things that I've had another MS specialist do as well. And she finally said, I really can't find anything wrong with you. And how it was expressed was like, you're making it up. It's really hard when somebody tells you that. I had an occupational therapist do some things with me. And the more I did the exercises, the weaker I got. I did a physical therapy thing. And one time I told the physical therapist, I can't do that. And she goes, yes, you can. You're fit enough. You can do it. I said, 
I cannot do this. And she kept insisting. I finally had to turn around to her and I said, my body cannot do this. And they just want to give up. So you, they don't want you back. They say there's nothing wrong with you. The occupational therapist sent a note to my primary telling her she's making it all up. I have that in writing. And so I talked to my primary and I said, I said, I didn't make that up. That's exactly how I, that's exactly, I've talked to you about this before. And she goes, yeah, I know. And she says, I don't think you're making this up, Laura. We just don't know what the answer is. So you have fatigue, muscle, and all these things going on. And they make you feel like you're making it up. You're a healthy specimen of a human being. You look healthy other than being exhausted. You are physically fit. You... And at this time, my weight was right where it needed to be. So I was making it up. And yet, my husband would see that, you know, I would say, David, I gotta go take a nap. Or my kids would see, we would go blueberry picking. And my youngest, I remember the last time I went blueberry picking with her, she says, Mom, let me carry your, your bucket. I'm like, oh, honey, I can do it. I couldn't. I mean, it was a... It was like a two or three gallon bucket. And I mean, I can lift that many blueberries, but I couldn't lift it. My daughter helped me a lot. My other daughters knew that I was struggling. And when they were home, because this is all came through as they were going off to college and all this other stuff. So part of the reason I am sharing this is that there's a lot of people that still walk around with Lyme disease. Part of the reason that they don't complain is because they've already done the treatment or they've been pushed aside for a long time and it's exhausting. I did the antibiotic therapy for four, four plus years and I finally had to tell my Lyme specialist, I said, I can't do this anymore because all I did was I kept taking pills, I would have side effects, and he would say, oh, you need to keep doing it because of Herx, I, the Herx effect, and that's true, but after you know four to six weeks, it was awful, and so I didn't want to do that anymore. But two years into it is why I got into herbs. But as I got better, I started doing my exercises and there's some exercises I can't I can't go for the long walks that I once did I used to go for a three mile walk up a steep hill down another steep hill and back up another I used to walk that three miles in an hour once or twice a day and I wasn't able to after a while today I still can't part of it is the muscle fatigue I could do it but there's another situation that prevents me from being to go for that kind of walk. And and that that situation can be a part of Lyme too. But we're we're still kind of trying to figure that one out too because I'm a complicated person. <laughs> now I'm sharing all this. This is just um num the second video in my series of Lyme. This one is just comparing Lyme disease and chronic fatigue that we can sometimes be misdiagnosed with. And there's other diseases out there. And I'm going to start with the ones that I was misdiagnosed with. Now, I did say that on my chart has chronic fatigue. And that's understandable because even when the Lyme symptoms aren't bothering me, I still have chronic fatigue. But I'm finding that I'm sleeping better when, this, when I'm not getting flares. And... I'm getting rest, but I might have to take a nap during the day. But if there's a lot of sunshine out and I'm out there getting the sun, I do better. And that's another thing that I'll be talking about as I move forward are some things that you can do naturally to feel better. And um, I'm not always perfect. <laughs> and it, it did throw me off when I had to go on an antibiotic for an infection and then had to go on it. Um, antifungal and it, that whole thing just messed me up and so I'm trying to use more of my herbs right now to kind of like break that cycle and hopefully it'll work if not I have a doctor who just 
is compassionate enough to take care of that. So anyways, I'm going to ask you, if you are a patient who's dealing with Lyme disease and you know that it's Lyme, be patient with yourself and with others. And I know that's really hard. If you're in the gist of Lyme disease, we don't have patience at all. And I know that as the flares come in, I don't have much patience anymore. And But I'm doing okay right now. So my patience is okay. But I, a couple weeks ago, it wasn't so cool. And But I want you to know that if you are diagnosed with Lyme disease, be patient with yourself. Take the time to heal your body. There are many specialists out there as I shared in my previous video, some do not take insurance, which is unfortunate. I was blessed with a physician who works within our hospital system that does take insurance. So that worked for me. As I went along and I had a spine, um, I had a spine specialist who did some back surgery for me, I discovered that he knows all about Lyme disease and there was another gentleman that helped with some things. And the, the reason I stopped seeing him was I'd be out in the waiting room for an hour. And then he would talk and talk and talk without me talking. I just found it was more frustrating. He was good at what he did. He also knew about Lyme disease and he actually went to seminars so that he could better understand Lyme disease. And this is what we need. We need physicians to understand it better and more often than not you may discover that doctors know that Lyme disease exists they just can't do anything about it because of the facility that they might work for one of the big ones in New Hampshire they do not have a Lyme specialist they do not want one they deny that Lyme disease exists or long chronic fatigue, I mean, chronic persistent Lyme, or even the long-term Lyme, they just, if you test negative on the hospital test, you no longer have Lyme. You have something else going on. And then they let you go. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. So what is it that you're saying I have? Because this is where I get frustrated. If you're going to tell me I don't have something that I have had a test that proves it, then you tell me what's wrong. Now, I have been doing really well for the most part, and then I get these flares. And how do I know that it's Lyme disease? That's something I'm going to be sharing with you is some of the symptoms that I deal with in another video. And I shared a bunch of them in the first video of what we get. Remember, every Lyme patient is different. Every chronic fatigue person is different. Everyone that has anxiety there's different causes for it. Sure, Lyme might be it, but I have anxiety for other reasons as well. I used to be ashamed of it, and I'm not anymore. You know why? Because that's me. That's who I am. That's what I had to do was, okay, I have to accept all these things that are wrong and then work on improving it. Am I perfect? No, but I try really, really hard. It's sort of like strengthening my muscle strength. I work hard at this. The most I can lift with the hand weights right now, you're gonna laugh, it's only three pounds. I used to here at the house manually do weights up to eight pounds. And so it's like, this is crazy. I used to be much better than this. So in sharing all this, uh, if you're not one who has Lyme, but you live with somebody who does, have patience and have compassion and give them time to heal. Help them find a doctor who listens and be aware that if you get a doctor who is not in a position to accept insurance, it's really expensive. Now, later on, I might share some herbs that I take, but remember, I am not a physician. 
I cannot diagnose you and I cannot tell you what herbs will work for you. And I mean, I used to have a few people that I was on um, some Lyme groups. People would tell me, oh, you got to do this. Oh, you got to do that. The thing is, you have to know your body. You have to understand what you're allergic to. And you have to understand how every herb affects you. And you also have to understand how your nutrition is. How is your nutrition? Are you eating healthy? Or are you so depressed you're eating chips and soda? Get rid of those two items. Seriously. They will not help your chronic fatigue. They will not help with your Lyme disease. They will not help with any health condition that you are dealing with. Get rid of the carbonated beverages. Get rid of the chips and junk food. Start eating healthy. So, well, I think that is all that I wanted to share about the comparison. And I will be back to share a comparison of this with another disease that I have been misdiagnosed with. Or maybe I have it, but they can't prove it. And sometimes that's what they tell you. And, um, and I found it interesting that there's nothing that, um, what did it say? It, there's not a lot known about chronic fatigue, but there's a lot of people with it. And, but I do think chronic fatigue is real. Think about these last two years. There's some people that are exhausted still to this day. It took me two years and then actually a little over two years. And then a few months into this, I finally like, when I made the decision to retire, I just like, I'm done. But I also made some other decisions in terms of my health care. And um, they're hard decisions to make. But I'm making them because it's not about the health care system. It's about me. And I need to be able to love me so that I can take care of me. And that's what you need to do if you are a Lyme patient. And, um, and if there's care providers and healthcare workers that are listening today, I thank you. And I hope it gives you some insight. But please, if there's questions that I might be able to answer, I'd love to have you write, you know, write them down. And, um, and if you are somebody who is interested in Lyme disease, and you're not interested in the other things that I talk about, you might want to consider, you don't have to, might want to consider subscribing to the channel and then hit the bell and put that you want the notifications. That way when you see Lyme disease, you can actually listen to that. But the other items that you might not be interested in, like fishing with my husband, you might not, or the chickens, and stuff, that might not be of interest to you, but the Lyme disease does. Take a listen to that and then you can push the other ones aside and not listen to it. So I hope this was helpful and I hope that you have a beautiful Labor Day weekend. God bless and stay well.